Have you ever been working on editing a project, you open it up a while later and you find tons of offline media and missing assets? Well today I'm going to show you how I organize my projects using folders and a tool called Post Taste so that doesn't happen again. Hey, I'm Chadwick. This is Creative Video Tips where I help you create videos and make a difference and stand out. If that's something you're into, click subscribe right now so you don't miss the next tip. All right, today we're talking all about folder structures. I'm going to show you my foolproof folder structure and organization method so that you can open a project years down the road, wherever, whenever, and it's just going to work. Let's get into it. Okay, now the reason a lot of times your media may have gone offline is because it's moved from its original location. So whether it's Final Cut Pro, Avid Media Composer, DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere, all those project files just point to the media. The project file itself does not have media in it. So your folder structure is really important and the tool I use to organize my folders is great and it's free. It's called Digital Rebellion makes it. So you go to digitalrebellion.com and the product is called Post Taste. So download Post Taste, okay? Um, they've got a Mac version, a PC version. Once you've done that, go ahead and open it. So I use Spotlight, Command, Spacebar to open it. And then within Post Taste, it comes with some templates already built out. I'm gonna show you mine here. Um, I just called it Creative Video Tips, and it's pretty in-depth. But the point of this video is you have a place to put things um, so that they don't get left all about. So think about it in your house. If you don't have a spot to put away whatever it is, um, it gets left out and it leaves a mess. And if you do that with digital assets for video, you're going to not be able to open a project later because things are going to move over time as you delete and clean things out. So the way it works in post taste to draw folders out once you've created a template, which is simple, you would just, to create a template, you would just hit plus and say new template, whatever it is. And then on the right side, you've got, you know, you can create new folders or actual project files within here. I just use it for folders. And then it could be, you know, folder one, and then you can have folders inside of folders. I think you can figure that out pretty quickly by yourself. Now to create a new project, you go over here to the new project tab, you give a project a name, call in this YouTube tutorial, and you say create project, and it's gonna ask you where you wanna put it. In a true YouTube demo tutorial, I'm gonna put it on the desktop. Say save, and it creates a project with all of my folders that I had preset up in my template, and it's all dated and timestamped the folder creation of when you did that. That's really helpful. So here's how I use all those folders. It looks like a lot, but there's actual use and rhyme and reason to it. I'm gonna jump over here quickly to a project that I just finished. So this is a 34 minute long show film that I cut together. And uh, you can see it's, it's a beast, right? There is over one terabyte of assets that are in this thing. And it's all contained within one project folder. So that's that's one of the keys here to this whole thing is you're gonna take one single folder, all your project files, all your media, all your assets are gonna live in that one folder. And that makes it portable. So you can take that folder when you're done with the project, move it to another hard drive, move it to the cloud, give it to another editor, all of it stays together. And the, the video editing project stays linked to those assets. So. The folders that I use, first of all, they are numbered one, two, three, four, because the Mac finder is alphanumeric and I want project files always to be at the top, just a muscle memory thing. So I know it's in the right same spot every time. Project files are going to be your AEP files. Color is going to be your DaVinci Resolve project files. And yes, you'll have multiples, especially if you're backing up as you go. Um, edit, this is your this is your bread and butter, right? So this is, your, this right here is an Avid Media Composer project file with all my bins. Um, you could have a Final Cut Pro project file, Premiere, whatever it is, that's where that's gonna live. Um, and then this one also has a Pro Tools session as well with um, all those session files. So number two is assets. Assets, this is gonna be the bulk of everything. If you do nothing other than in this video, create a template that has an assets folder and a project files folder, you can be off doing pretty good. The reason I have this broken down further 
is just because the projects I work on tend to have a lot of assets and it just keeps things a little more tidy. So under assets, I have an animation VFX folder. These are things that come out of After Effects or out of Cinema 4D or you know any sort of app where I'm creating a motion graphic or there's a VFX plate or something that it's a, a generated file um, that's gonna be added, but it's not coming off of a camera. We've got art cards. So this, these are things like, you know, here's a credits list. Um, that's gonna be things that are graphic related, PSDs, illustrator files, audio. We've got this all broken down by music, production sync, which is like, a, it, they had dual system sound running, uh, sound effects, voiceover, and then we've got another folder, place to put your fonts. You wanna make sure you have your fonts too. Just because you have them installed on your computer doesn't mean they're going to be installed on the next computer that opens that project. Photos and scripts. And then there's a slates folder. Haven't used that in a while, but that's anytime I'm doing commercial work. And then a video folder. So video, this is stuff that comes off of the camera. So source are files directly from the camera. So those are that's your original media. And then you could have a proxy folder or a transcode folder if you're gonna do like a proxy workflow. So I've got a video I'll link up here right now. If you wanna learn how to edit video a little smoother, especially on an underpowered computer, like honestly, everyone has an underpowered computer if you're editing modern footage these days, <laughs> uh, that makes it easier. So there's a, a link to that. So that's a, a place right there where you can store your proxy files or your dailies is another term for those. Now under three is deliverables. So in my mind, this you could also call this works in progress. This is gonna be a series of dated folders that show you along the way, you know, your exports. And I usually do a dated folder system. That's really important. So you wanna, when you date things, you always wanna lead with the year. The reason you lead with the year is because at the end of a year, like in December, you're gonna be working on 12 dash whatever, right? And then you're gonna keep working on it in January and it's gonna be one. And all of a sudden your sorting gets all messed up. So make sure you begin with the year and then it'll keep your oldest stuff at the top, your newest stuff at the bottom, if that's how it's sorted. And then that's, you know, you keep your works in progress in there. So these are like low res preview files you're uploading for the client. Prep is a folder if you're doing turnarounds so basically meaning you're going to send your file out for a uh, professional mix, uh, color correct, uh, VFX work, stuff like that. So these are going to be EDL files, reference files. If you don't know what it is, you probably don't need the folder for it, but having a spot for those is really helpful because that's a, a work in progress stage. Then finally, we have a finals folder. Finals are anything you ship. So. You might have a final version two master totally done really expert finished video <laughs> folder um, but i think what really works best in finals is if you date things if you're going to have multiples just date it um, and then within here i have a prores hq which is a great master format to keep a final version of a video and then a compressed one so the compressed one would be like a, an h264 4k and 1080p version is what I've gotten here on this project here. So those are great to share out to Vimeo or YouTube. And that is pretty much my folder structure that I use. If you were to dumb it down, you could have really just like a project files folder, an assets folder, and a finals folder. If you just had those three and always put those types of assets in it, it's gonna save you a lot of headache. Hey, if you learned something from this video tip, click like and subscribe. I've got a new video tip coming out next week and we've got a great backlog of stuff you can check out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.